All right, so we need to measure the valve guide clearance on these heads since they're new to us and we aren't really sure. So I'm just using the T-gauge here. Uh, better way is to go ahead and buy a valve stem bore gauge. Uh, you can use a T-gauge. I've been using T-gauges for years. Well, before I had a valve stem guide sun and uh, valve stem guide tool. but I don't have that anymore. So back to using T-gauges. Uh, you're going to want to measure uh, across the thrust surface. Uh, T-gauge, you're just going to release the pressure there, stick it in there, release the pressure, rock it to one side, tighten the top down, pull it back through, and then measure it. I've already measured these, uh, but we'll just leave it at that for right now. So just hold on. Or actually, you know what? You're going to have to measure. Uh, I usually do it in six places. So we're gonna, right here, I had on this intake guide, I had uh, three, 309. And we're going to go down in the middle and measure it there. Lock it down there. Take it out and see what we got here. I'm just using dial calipers for this because I don't feel like getting out the micrometers to do it. This is a perfectly acceptable way to do it. We got 309 there. And we'll check it down at the bottom. Let's see what we got there. Then we're, we're slightly more there down at the bottom. We're like three oh eight and a half really. So that thing's well within spec. It's it's sitting at about average about a thousandths, which is perfect for an intake valve. Evos usually one thousandths intake, two thousandths exhaust. The spec is a little bit looser than that. You can go. I think the spec is it's out of spec if it's over. 22 ten thousandths on the intake and 32 or 35 ten thousandths on the exhaust. So all you're going to do is measure the valve stem and write that down and then measure the guide and you're just going to subtract the valve from the guide dimensions. That'll give you your clearance. So we're at about average of one thousandths on the intake, and also too, you should probably do it sideways, side to side as well. So we'll check that. See where we're sitting at here. Yeah, 309. So we're, we're good there. So we're, we're at basically 1,000 on the exhaust and 2,000 or 1,000 on the intakes and 2,000 on the exhaust, which for an Evo with, with some miles on it, that's perfect. What you'll find now is if you have a lot of carbon, especially in the exhaust side, your exhaust will be tight down at the bottom. And you can usually tell if you look at the valve down here. You'll see uh, carbon all the way up the stem there. So when you're checking these, you'll want to clean all the carbon off there. We'll have carbon up to probably about right there on the valve, meaning there's carbon stuck in the guide too. So you want to, you know, use a hone, a little berry ball hone to help get the carbon out of the guide uh, and then measure them after that. Uh, I've already cleaned these out, so we're good there. Now, 
if you have to replace the guides, uh, it's a fairly straight, simple, pro straightforward process. You're going to knock the guides out with a drift. There's a special made driver for that. And reinstall the guides as centered as you can get them. And you will have to do a valve job afterwards because no matter how straight you think you're going in there, it's going to be crooked a little bit. So basically the valve isn't going to really be that concentric with the seat anymore. So look forward to that. Uh, and then you're going to have to ream the guides after you drive them in there because they're usually not the size. Uh, reaming's a fairly, fairly easy process. Uh, it's a reamer. That being said, uh, when you're reaming, you need to be really careful when you're reaming a guide. Uh, because although you think, yeah, it's a carbide reamer and it's really hard, you can actually cut the valve guide crooked. As an example, I used to work with a guy who had seen me doing it, and he, he quit and went to work for an independent shop. And calls me up one day, wants to go to lunch, and he just doesn't ask me straight up what this is. He takes me to lunch, you know, stuck me up a little bit. And uh, we go to lunch, and then we're talking, and he, he's like, man, I got a, I got a cylinder that I put some guides in that uh, stuck the valves twice on. And I'm like, what kind of bike is it? He's like, Ironhead Sportster. I'm like, man, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, put the guides in, ream them, do a valve job, and, you know, you're going to measure them. But what he was doing is... When he was doing the reamer, you can run a reamer through there and then measure it, and it'll say it's, you know, Ironhead Sports, it'll say it's two thousandths, because it's just what the gauge says, two thousandths all the way down, or all the way up the sides. But, what, let me show you on this piece of paper here, it's a little bit easier. Uh, to say that's a guide right there that looks fairly straight i think so if you cock the reamer to one side this is exaggerated actually guide shape like that right there i don't know if you can see that or not so it's like banana shaped and you can you can stick your gauge in there measure it and it'll say it's two thousands here two thousands there two thousands there so you, you kind of have to go by feel too, you know. If you if you go to put a guide in, you go to put the valve in there, and it doesn't slide right in. Like it takes pressure to put it in. Like this should pretty much just drop right in there, like that. That's good right there. If you kind of have to pull it out. Use force to pull it out, or use force to put it in there. It ain't got the right clearance. And for this, you can usually feel it if you grab the valve valve and just shake it in the in the guide a little bit. You can, you can feel two thousands. That's two thousands right there. I know you can't really see that, but another one too. If you go to pull the guide out, put your finger over the top of the guide and pull it out. You should hear that noise right there. So we'll just check this intake here, even though I know they're already right. That's got some oil down because I sprayed it to keep them from rusting. But. So that's pretty much it for the valve guides. Measure the valves. Measure the guides. Uh, make yourself a little chart for your motor log there. I don't know if you can see that. Just write it out. Rear intake, front intake, rear exhaust, rear intake, whatever I got written down there. You're going to have the valve size, 
the guide dimensions that you measured, the ID of the guide, OT of the, OD of the valve, ID of the guide, then just subtract the valve from the valve size from the guide size, and that gives you your clearance. So we're at two, th two thousandths on intake, or two thousandths on the exhaust, one thousandths on the intakes. And uh, really that's that's about it for that. Uh, so I couldn't find my uh, CC plate for CC in the head, so I had to order some more uh, plexiglass. So I'll be making a new new CC plate to do the heads with. I know it's around here somewhere. I just, I just can't find it. We've moved. You know, I, I had a stroke and uh, got rid of a bunch of stuff and then moved and then moved again. And I know I've seen it since we moved here four or five years ago, whatever it was, but I've got, uh, got it around here somewhere, but I'm, I'm going to make a new one. Because, you know, to be sure, as soon as I make another one, that other one will pop up here somewhere. But once I get those made, I'll have extra material because I bought two sheets. That's enough to make like eight plates. Now, I'm not making eight plates. Well, I might. I'll, I'll make, I'll probably make two. And then have the rust if I need to make more, if, if somebody wants one or something, you know. Very simple. It's, it's nothing but a piece, piece of plexiglass with some holes drilled in it. And that's it. Actually, you're on these, you really only need to drill one hole. And that's directly in the center there. But I'll do that when I get to it. So anyway, new subscribers, Thank you for subscribing. Thanks for the likes. Thanks to the old subscribers. Thanks for encouragement. Uh, thanks for any questions or tips or pointers or anything. I really do appreciate it. Uh, can be a little abrupt sometimes, but, you know, it's, ever since I had a stroke, that's just what happened. So anybody... Uh, if you like my content, please like, share, subscribe, comment, all that stuff, and everybody have a great day. Thank you.